Hey, welcome back in episode three of this little mini series of the Harmonious at Lunch podcast, and that is scaling without sacrifice. It's a new year. We all want to grow our businesses, but we don't want to sacrifice our lives and our personal time along the way. And ultimately, that's what we do here at What If. We help our, our clients scale effortlessly so that they never have to worry about pulling their hair out, growing pains, and all the other garbage that traditionally comes with growing a business. And that's what we're here to talk about on this little mini series. So episode one, we talked about the four Ds. Yesterday, we talked a little bit about getting clear on where you're putting your focus. And today, we're going to talk a little bit about marketing, what we call at, at What If ubiquity. And that is the U in the harmonious acronym up here. So ubiquity, if you look at that word and why we combine sales and marketing, we'll get there in just a second, but ubiquity is not being all places and all things to all people. It's just being all places that your ideal avatar is. It's very important to understand that difference because as a small business owner, as an entrepreneur, we get caught up a lot of times in trying to be all things to all people. We think we have to be on all marketing channels, all social media networks, and we have to be doing billboards, Facebook ads, TV commercials, radio spots, Pandora ads, the list goes on and on. And we forget that really we just need to speak to our ideal avatar extremely clearly. And then the, I, the whole point of marketing is to make the sale easier. That gets effortless. So it's not about better marketing, more marketing, more gizmos and gadgets and, and better tactics. Don't fall for that stuff on the internet. I see it all the time about the, the last marketing solution you'll ever need. I mean, maybe, but still that's a tactic within the overall strategy. So let's, let's look at how we at What If look at this harmonious architecture. There's three levels to everything that we do. There is the overall architecture level. That's where we'll go down and break, break down each of these disciplines by the architecture level. What does it mean to be ubiquitous? We're not going to do that on, on this episode. We do that inside of our inner circle. But then below that is the strategy. And this is where essentially in terms of marketing, this is where a CMO would come in. For us, we are COOs. So we are chief operating officers. COOs really handle the strategy. CEOs handle the vision and strategy of the overall company. A CFO would handle the strategy around finance. So there's that second layer where, again, still most small business owners don't ever get to. The layer below that is the tactics and the tasks and the activities. That's where most people spend our time. So if you look at it as a pyramid, right, you have architecture level on top. And I'm, I'm sorry for those of you listening. I'm drawing with my hands on the screen here. So hopefully you're watching this. But we have... A pyramid and at the top we have the architecture level down in the middle of the pyramid that's where we have the strategy and on the bottom we have the tactics you can see just using the pyramid illustration why most people only talk about the tactics and that's what you hear about most because that's the biggest section of this pyramid very few people actually i i haven't seen anybody talk about the top which is the architecture uh, level of things and again we're not doing that here but this is more of the strategy and how to understand what tactics to use but if you just look at the strategy level, that, that center section of the pyramid, you'll be head and shoulders above the competition because it's not throwing spaghetti at the wall. And that's what most people do for marketing and sales. It's having an actual direction. So how do we get there with your ubiquity, with your sales and marketing? Before we get there, we first need to understand that sales and marketing are the same thing. I'll pause. I'll let you, you can pause this. Put your hate comments in the comment section. I'd love to hear them. Here's my argument behind that. And actually, before we keep going, I will let you know, if you subscribe to this channel, you will hear me and Sean break this down in a lot of detail uh, next week, or maybe it's already aired, depending on when you're listening to this. So make sure you subscribe. We're going to go in detail on this on our next Inner Circle podcast. Um, different show, but you'll hear about that here. Sales and marketing. The job of marketing is to make the sale easier. I said that a couple of minutes ago. If you're not doing that, why, why are you marketing? Most big companies and even a lot of small companies have sales departments and marketing departments. The fact that they're split up in two separate divisions and they have different set of outcomes and goals and bonus structures really just confuses me. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I can't for the life of me figure out 
why that would ever be the case. If you are not marketing to make the job of the salesperson easier or irrelevant, there's a little disruptor for you, then why are you spending money on marketing? It doesn't make any sense. The job of marketing, the job of good marketing is to make the sale easier, or if you have a salesperson, make their job irrelevant. They should be just a person that gets on the phone and accepts credit cards. That's what really, really good and effective marketing should do and can do. That is absolutely possible. Let's take some examples, actually. Um, Tesla. Tesla has some of the best marketing in the world because they've built a brand around what it is that they do and their product. So you can go online and you can buy a Tesla online. You never have to talk to a salesperson. They don't have, well, maybe they have salespeople in their dealerships, but they don't need salespeople. I can go on their website right now. I can buy a car. I can finance it. I can pay in full. I can pay cash. It could be at my front door in two weeks or maybe a couple months. I don't really know what their backlog is like. But moral of the story is that is a very, very expensive product. That is a high ticket product, if you will. That's going to be anywhere from $30,000 to $150,000. And they don't need a salesperson. So if you're going to come at me in the comments, and maybe you've already written a comment that's a little nasty, maybe you should take it back. Because if you're going to argue that you need to have a salesperson in your business, I would argue that you need to look at your ubiquity. You need to look at your strategy and how the architecture plays into that. And you probably don't have a good handle on the overall strategy aspect of your company. Now that I've completely offended half of the audience, let's kind of, let's look at what this could look like and where good marketing comes from in the first place. And that's what I always talk about here on the Harmonious at Lunch podcast. When I have a guest, when I don't have a guest, the leverage between the links, between the disciplines. Harmonious is an acronym for the 10 fundamental business disciplines you must master in order to succeed in business. It's based on our time working with the Fortune 50, the Fortune 100, and all the way down to solopreneurs. These disciplines are always present, sometimes focused on, sometimes not. The cases where they're not focused on, that's the businesses that go out of business. The businesses that they're getting them sort of right, but they're kind of just, they don't really know they're there. They don't understand it. They're kind of duct taping things together and hoping they get uh, the tactics right to get to the ultimate outcome. Those businesses are more prevalent than probably you realize. And maybe you have one of those businesses. What that looks like is complete chaos, constant firefighting, and no clear direction. That is 95% plus of businesses that are currently operating and out there. And if you fall into that category, it's okay. Most do just understand there is a clear path forward. The ones who get it really, really right, those are the ones that have nailed the architecture and they're very few and far between. But just understand if you want to get there, the path is simple. It's actually not doing more. It's the opposite. It's doing less, but doing more of the right things to get you there. So we're going to dive in on ubiquity. I'm going to keep this episode short. I know I said that the last two episodes and they weren't. So shame on me, but this one, I'm pretty sure we can get done relatively quickly here. So ubiquity, where does ubiquity come from? What is one of the biggest disciplines that ubiquity touches? That is the N in harmonious. And that stands for navigate. So in navigation, what we do at What If is we break down first and foremost, the core of your business. That are three main parts, mission, vision, core values. Not in that order. We usually take core values of both the entrepreneur and the company, depending on the size of the company. If we're going to work with a Fortune 500 company, we're not taking the core values of the CEO. Those are, of course, important for hiring and, and bringing on team members, but we need the core values of the organization, and then we need the mission of the organization, and that is the mission or is why they started. So again, we work with a lot of small business owners and entrepreneurs now, and in our inner circle, what we do is we take the, the why. Why did the founder start this company, the CEO, the leader, the owner? Why did they start this company in the first place? What was the, the belief they had? What is the injustice in the world that they were out to solve that they said, no, I'm putting a stake in the ground. I must be the one to solve this problem. I must resolve this injustice in the world. It has to be powerful. And it usually is. A lot of business owners get disconnected with their why after years and years of just going through business and putting out fires and managing chaos, but it's always there. And the power is in uncovering that. From there, we go to the vision. The company vision is a five-year numbers 
tied metric tied goal that we can then break down into yearly outcomes, quarterly outcomes, and break down into daily activities that will get us there. So why, why you're saying is this tied to ubiquity and how are, how are those three things tied to ubiquity? Let's look at an example where ubiquity was not tied to those, that area of navigation. Does Bud Light ring a bell from last year? Bud Light clearly violated their brand promise, which ultimately is what navigation does. It defines a direction for a brand. The core values come through as how the brand will show up. Your customers will resonate with your core values, with your mission, the injustice in the world you're out to solve, your ultimate why. This is why people do business with you. They want to enter into a story of working with a company who they can relate to a problem that they also agree exists in the world. In terms of Bud Light, maybe it was just getting drunk on a Saturday night. That's that's what people believe the problem is. There's too many sober people in the world on Saturday nights. I need a Budweiser or a Bud Light. Well, they ultimately just didn't understand their customer base, or maybe they did, but they got too caught up in the trends. So if we go back to that pyramid, in marketing, trends are at the bottom. Strategies in the middle, Trends and tactics are at the bottom. What Bud Light said is a trend is more is way more important than a strategy and the architecture. On the architecture level, ubiquity connects to navigation. They broke that wide open. No debating that at all. On the second level, the strategy level, you could say Budweiser had some of the best marketing in terms of the past decade and a half, at least the early 2000s and into the 20 teens. Remember the Bud, Budweiser Super Bowl commercials, the Bud Light Super, Super Bowl commercials? They would make you cry. They would make you laugh hysterically. I mean, they connected with their target audience and they did a phenomenal job at it. And then they said, let's throw all of that out the window and try to jump on and get a totally different demographic to jump on our brand. Now, maybe that could have worked but the problem was it was that demographic that they were chasing was a direct violation to the demographic that made up their current customer base. Now, I'm not taking sides on this issue. I am just showing you a real life, real world example of a big company where this went devastatingly wrong. I don't know the final numbers um, of, of Bud Light's and Anheuser-Busch's, the parent company's losses in the uh, third, second, third, and fourth quarter of 2023, but I know they were significant in the multiple billion dollar range. I don't care how big your company is, that's a loss you're gonna feel. And that was the result of one person forgetting about the architecture, abandoning the strategy, and jumping on a trend. Now, that's an extreme example, but can you see as a small business owner, as an entrepreneur, when you don't focus two levels higher on the architecture and the strategy, how your tactics really get you in trouble and how every trend or tactic or opportunity could be the next big thing that could make you go viral. When you do that, you also don't develop a consistent brand. So if you thought I was going to get on here today and talk about ubiquity and sales and marketing and the next cool tactic, uh, you can see you were maybe wrong about that. And I will absolutely not be diving into that. Now we do have luminaries, which are experts, trusted experts in our community who do exactly that. We bring them onto our inner circle calls and they will give you the strategies and the tactics and the next best thing and actually advise your company. They're basically, they could be a, a fractional CMO for you. And we do that for our clients, but only after understanding what those companies are, where they're going and how all of those tactics and trends impact the strategy and the architecture. So these are really, really important things to, to keep in mind. And that's why I never, ever jump on a trend without looking at those top two levels. So remember, architecture, strategy, trend, or tactic, that is the order we're looking at things. Please don't get ahead of yourself and look at that backwards. But again, just like the four Ds that we talked about two episodes ago, most entrepreneurs are doing things backwards. We're looking at a broken model, the model, the current business model, which is broken and lead small businesses to failure. So let's let's review how what this looks like, what should we do about it, and then what what are we going to do with our ubiquity, our, our marketing and sales moving forward? 
So again, remember the pyramid, architecture, strategy, tactics, or trends. And before that too, and the other reason this ties to navigation is you need to understand fully who your customer is. You need to have a very clear picture of your customer avatar. And if you want, I do have, um, I have a free giveaway for you. It's a, it's a spreadsheet that, that I have that I'll give to you. Um, just put a comment down below that says avatar. Um, and I will, I'll go ahead and just shoot that over to you. I'll send you a DM or an email, however you want me to get it to you. And I'll walk you through a screen share video of how you can use that spreadsheet and nail down your, your ultimate why, why you're in business and who a clear picture of who your customer is, who your best customer is. Uh, and here's the best part. It might not be your current customer base. Sometimes in business, we chase the next dollar and not the right customer to serve. So what we want to do is get more in line with our company's why and vision and core values, find customers that align with that, and make sure our marketing speaks to those people so we bring them on so we can serve them at the highest level with the lowest amount of friction. When you can do that, that's when your ubiquity and navigation are really in true harmony and things are a lot easier and everything else falls into place too. Because think about it, and this is where the disciplines all link and we can leverage that for our own success. So navigation, we have a clear picture of who your company is, why you're in business, what you stand for, what you believe in, and who your ideal customer is and your brand promise. Fantastic. That's over here. Then you can understand exactly with ubiquity how to speak to that person and where they are. They're not on all social media platforms. Maybe they're just on billboard signs on I-95 on the East Coast. Maybe that's the best marketing channel for you. I don't know. Maybe it's Facebook ads, Pinterest ads. Maybe it's going door to door with flyers. When you know your customer, you know where they are. So you can eliminate all other marketing channels, but you can be omnipresent on the ones that they are on. This actually happened to my wife um, earlier today with her business. She, she had a friend of hers call her and say, I see you all over my social media feed. What are you doing? And how can I find out more about this? And it's because she's not on all social media platforms, but she's on the ones where her ideal client is. And that's so powerful because they think you are all over my feed. You are everywhere I am. Not really, but they're everywhere that person is. That's the power of true ubiquity at its peak, at its highest level. 10 out of 10 ubiquity. There's other factors in 10 out of 10 ubiquity, but understanding you don't have to be all things to all people in all places. You just have to be all places to the right person. There's power in maximizing that. So I got sidetracked. I got off, off the record here. I do that all the time to myself. But really what I want you to just understand is figure out where your clients are. What is the message they need to hear? The solution you provide, the problem you solve, where are they? What's your brand promise? And then the links between the disciplines are very simple. When you have a client you know everything about, you know how to talk to them, how to serve them, where to find them, what problems they, they have that you need to provide a solution for, and then ultimately how to provide that solution, your operations fall into place so smoothly. Your customer service is effortless. The ultimate goal of any company should be to eliminate two departments. That is sales and customer service. Imagine that. If you could just if you could eliminate those two roles from your company, how would that change your company? How would that change your calendar? If you're a solopreneur, the activities that you're doing. Imagine if you never had to deal with a customer complaint or a question because your marketing was so good and the service you provided was so intact and lined up exactly with what the customer wanted that everyone just loved you, never had any questions. Your biggest concern was responding to five-star Google reviews because people were just so happy with your service. I'm not going to tell you it's impossible, and I'm not going to tell you it's achievable in a very short time frame, but I think personally it is very achievable to eliminate those two roles. If your ubiquity is on point because you honor your brand and your brand promise, and you know exactly how to deliver on that, you win every single time, and that is absolutely possible. So three disciplines we just talked about. The, the bulk of the episode is about ubiquity and understanding architecture, strategy, tactics in that order, but also navigation and operation. So I have a couple of things for you. Again, if you comment down below, um, if you comment avatar, 
I will send you that spreadsheet and the Loom video sharing how you can go through that, identify your ideal avatar, and be able to take your ubiquity to the next level so that when you understand who you're talking to, you know, and the places to find them, then you can look for the right tactics and the right strategies to communicate with them effectively. You'll probably be able to eliminate 80% of your marketing, if not more, when you know the right place and the right message to speak to people with. Um, the other thing I want to say is if you are a little bit concerned about your navigation, I'm going to put this website on the screen here and I'll put this in the show notes as well. What if.com slash chaos. This is a workshop that we're holding. It's a three day workshop. We hold it once a month. So regardless of when you're seeing this, um, this presentation, this episode, I want you to go to what if.com slash chaos and just check out the three day workshop we have on, on uh, reducing the chaos and calming the chaos in your business. Ultimately, what we do here is go through in detail, the navigation discipline, the mission, vision, core values, and make sure they are rock solid for your company so that you can build off of that. So for absolutely nothing, just for listening to this episode and taking action, hopefully you will get the avatar spreadsheet and video where you can implement that stuff and get going, simplifying your ubiquity, your marketing. Uh, and if you take action on this too, you can make sure your navigation is in order. Traditionally, the navigation discipline is called strategic planning, but that is a boring term and I don't even know what it means. So go there. We'll help you get that in order. And that's two out of 10 disciplines. That might be the 20% that gets you the biggest lift. And the other thing I'll say about uh, the chaos and the navigation disciplines on the screen, and you'll hear Sean say this um, at the event because it's something that we we tell our clients all the time. If you get navigation right, like 10 out of 10 right, it's really hard to get the other nine disciplines wrong. But if you get navigation wrong, it's really, really hard to get the other nine disciplines right. Let that sink in for a minute. And that's my offer. This is a free event. There is a VIP upgrade. You can come backstage and, and talk to us and ask your questions, get the clarifications. But ultimately, I want you to do two things from this watching this episode. And that is register for this event, whatif.com slash chaos, comment avatar. Let's get your ubiquity and your navigation in order and get your company launched to that next level so you can scale without the sacrifice this year and beyond. I hope this was valuable. Guess what? I'm coming back with a bonus episode tomorrow. We're going to answer some questions and dive a little bit deeper on some other topics that relate to scaling that we see the most hurdles with from our clients and other people who we've just we've just been talking to over the years. And maybe it'll help you get over the hump of the fear of scaling. That's a real thing. We talked about that on day one. Fear of success is very, very real. And there's a mindset in, that needs to be in place in order to scale without the sacrifice. It's attainable. It's simple. We'll get you there. Thank you for watching. Remember to do those two things. Register whatif.com slash chaos. Comment avatar for your giveaways, for sticking with me and watching this little mini series. Come back tomorrow for the bonus episode. We'll see you there and make sure you subscribe to Harmonious at Lunch. This has been fun. We'll see you on the next episode.